What's the difference between protein from animals and protein from plants? Are all foods that fall under the same macronutrient category absorbed by the body in the same way? Keep watching to find out. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, low carb way of eating, intermittent fasting, ketosis, all that good stuff. I would love, love, love if you enjoy this video to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, let's get into the video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the differences between animal and plant protein and why it matters. Not all protein is the same, just as not all carbs are the same and not all fat is the same. Protein is a macronutrient that is made up of several amino acids. It is an essential part of the human diet and is needed in almost every metabolic process within the body. Unlike with carbs and fat, our bodies can't store protein. It is used almost immediately when it is consumed. And for this reason, it is really important that we get enough each and every day. Protein can be found in both animal products and plant products. And there's debate over which, if either, is a better source. And that is what we're gonna dig into in this video today. As mentioned before, protein is made up of amino acids. There are 20 amino acids that our body uses, and of these, nine are essential. Essential just means that our bodies can't manufacture them, so they have to come through diet. For optimal health, not only do we need to make sure that we are getting all nine, but we also need to make sure that we are getting them in the right ratios. So let's talk about animal protein first. Animal protein is considered to be a complete protein because it contains all nine essential amino acids. Because animal protein is similar to our protein, the amino acids in it are more readily available for protein synthesizing. On the other hand, most plant protein is considered to be incomplete because it does not have all these essential amino acids. This is true for things such as beans and nuts, which are often promoted as being high in protein. Soy does technically have all of them, but two of them, methionine and lysine, it is very, very low in, so it doesn't really count. Same thing goes for hemp, it is very low in lysine and leucine. Now, chia seeds, they do contain all the amino acids and they do have them in a pretty good ratio, but to obtain about 20 grams of protein from chia seeds, you need to consume about 580 calories worth. When you compare this to beef, to get the same amount of protein, you only need to consume about 100 grams. So all that being said, it is very hard to get how much protein you need and to get all the essential amino acids in the correct amounts just from plants. There are nutrients in animal protein and in plant protein that can't be found in the other one or can only be found in very, very small amounts. So let's get into the ones you can't get from plant products first. B12 is the obvious one that most people know about. Deficiency rates for B12 are way higher in vegans and vegetarians than they are in omnivores. Now, there are a couple plant foods that are a little bit tricky, such as seaweed, spirulina, and nutritional yeast. They do technically contain B12, but the form of B12 they contain isn't the form that we need. And this form actually blocks the absorption of the proper type. DHA is one of three omega-3 fatty acids. The other two are ALA and EPA. DHA is essential for proper brain function. It protects our brains against oxidative damage. Now, there are certain plant foods such as chia seeds, which are promoted as being high in omega-3s, but they do not contain any DHA. They do contain LAA, which can be converted to DHA, but the catch is our bodies aren't very good at making this conversion. Only about 5% 
of ALA that we consume will be converted to DHA and that varies from person to person as well. So some people are worse at making a conversion and some people are better, but yeah, it's around 5%. So not a lot gets converted. The best source of DHA is from fatty fish. There is a little bit of DHA in some forms of algae and you can take algae tablets, but you need to take a lot of them. I think it's something like six a day to be getting the minimum required amount of DHA. So there are two types of iron, heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme iron is found in meat only and it is mostly found in red meat, whereas non-heme iron can be found in plants. Heme iron is way easier for our bodies to absorb than non-heme iron. Vitamin D3 is the next one we're gonna talk about. Deficiencies in vitamin D lead to things like weak bones, osteoporosis, rickets. Vitamin D can be obtained from sunlight, but during the winter or if you're not getting enough sunlight, you need to get it through food. And it is not found in plants. Creatine is one that can't be found in plants whatsoever. It is really important because it is pretty much like an energy store for our muscle cells. It provides our muscles with greater strength and endurance. Choline is mostly found in animal products. You can get it from things such as eggs, salmon, beef, liver. It is available in some plants such as chickpeas, but in a lot lower amounts. Most people who don't eat meat or at least eggs are deficient in choline. Retinol, which is also known as vitamin A1, is a really, really important one. And it is only found in animal products. Foods such as sweet potatoes are promoted as being high in vitamin A, but they actually have beta carotene, which needs to be converted into retinol. And again, our bodies are not good at making this conversion. There have been studies that have been done on healthy individuals, and half of the people in these studies were not able to make this conversion at all. Of those who could make the conversion, they could only convert about 3%. And these studies were done in healthy individuals. For anyone with gut issues, diabetes, low thyroid function, all of these things poorly impact how well you are able to make these conversions. Now let's get into the ones you can't find in animal products. So vitamin C is the first one. It is a very, very powerful antioxidant. There is, however, some vitamin C in things such as beef liver. You can get about 23 grams per 100 grams that you consume. Now the interesting thing about vitamin C is that it competes with glucose for absorption into our bodies. And because of this, there is some debate about how much vitamin C you actually need if you're eating a diet that is low in glucose. Fiber is the other one that is absent in animal products. Fiber is important because it slows the rate that sugar is absorbed into our bloodstreams. When you eat food high in fiber, the sugars in those foods are absorbed slower and this keeps your blood glucose levels from rising too fast. Now, the same argument can be made that was made for vitamin C. If you are eating a diet that is lower in glucose, does that mean that you require less fiber? Phytic acid and lectins are two anti-nutrients that are found in plant protein that are not found in animal protein. Phytic acid, which is found in things such as nuts, beans, soy, and tofu, binds to nutrients and stops their absorption. This affects things such as calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. Now, sometimes anti-nutrients can be stopped from cooking, sprouting, or fermenting foods. So not only are you not getting a full amino acid profile with some of these plant proteins, but they are also stopping the absorption of other nutrients. Now, sometimes stressors such as anti-nutrients can be a good thing. They put just a little bit of stress on the body, which makes it more resilient. But when the majority of your protein is coming from things that are rich in anti-nutrients, that's when it starts to become a problem. So in conclusion, while you may be able to hit your protein goal from only consuming plant foods, 
It is highly unlikely that you get all of the essential amino acids and in the correct ratios. There are also several nutrients that can't be obtained from plants or can only be obtained in very, very small amounts. And when you throw anti-nutrients in there, which are further stopping your absorption of nutrients, it can be really, really hard to get the right balance. Now, don't get me wrong, it can be done, but you have to be supplementing, you have to be very careful with your calculations and making sure you're getting everything in the right amounts. And I mean, that is just a lot of trouble to go to when animal protein contains everything we need and it is already in the correct amounts and it is already in a form that is easy for our bodies to absorb. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. I will see you next time. Bye guys.